I'm working on the Hitachi EA1000VX system today. It, it uses a vortex silicon drift detector. I'm going to work with some ROHS examples. I have a solder sample in my hand. I'm going to place it on the image screen. You look, notice in the upper left hand corner as I place my sample. There we go. There's my solder sample. Now to the right you'll see these three columns. Notice that the third column matches my sample type. So that would be the right one to use to measure this sample. You can also come over here and select different recipes and so on over here. But for an automatic usage, uh, see if one of these matches your sample, which it does. This one here, we're going to hit the arrow button. It automatically populates over here the recipe type that we need. Uh, this is a high-speed metals tin sample. Uh, there's a list of them here that you can choose and we could add more. Um, we're not using any mylar to protect underneath the sample. We can do that if we want to, but I don't have any in there right now. You can also up here, as you can see, enter the product name, product number, and the measured area. I have center here. And of course, I'm measuring in the center. And I'm going to push start. Why this counts down. This recipe has also been created uh, in a way to shorten the measurement time. ROHS measurements can take quite a while, but you don't always need to go the full measurement time. For example, the lead in this is quite high. We're going to end the measurement time quickly, and how we do that is by the statistical error. When creating this recipe, you decide how much error you can accept. And once the number of the error gets down to a certain level, in other words, you become accurate enough, there's no reason to go on and we'll just end the measurement time for the lead. You can do that for every element. You can set up the pass-fail criteria. This is six different stages in the lower left hand corner down here. It is on uh, condition number four right now of six. And what it does during these different conditions is uses different filters and different current levels and so on to optimize the machine, machine measurements for each element of interest. You also see down here where it says assist consideration, lead was measured using L-beta and mercury using L-alpha. That was chosen probably because there was interferences with other elements, so it chose the best one for this analysis. You notice with cadmium it's a gray area. This is a good example. A gray area is we're uncertain if it's passed or failed. It's in the area of uncertainty of measurement. This particular sample would normally go be retested again, remeasured, or possibly go out for a destructive test. It's in the gray area where we cannot be positive based on the uncertainties that we've allowed to say pass or fail. The lead has obviously failed and the mercury has obviously passed based on our criteria that the user sets up. Each one of the customers has their own criteria that they can accept and you can edit it at will. The measurement is now finished, it says so in the bottom left. We're going to, we could hit remeasure. If we didn't like the fact that the cadmium was gray and we wanted to try it, we could do remeasure right now. We can go up here and type in lot number. We could hit remarks. It also saves them. Different ones that have been in here and remarks. You can edit that. Let's go to next. And you'll see we're back to where we started. Now let's do a lot end. And we'll go example for our lot end. Hit execute. 